Okay. All right. Intro to the Django admin interface. Um, if anybody wants to raise some hands in the Zoom chat, if you're familiar with Django at all, that would be great. I will, uh, or not raise hands, but just comment in the chat and I'll, we can check it later. Because I'm very curious as to how many of you Pythonistas use Django at all. I think it's great. If you're not doing web stuff, then maybe you don't need it, but I, I think Django is fantastic. So we'll go into a little bit of background on what Django is and why it's awesome too. Okay, what is Django? Django is a high-level Python web framework that encourages rapid development and clean, pragmatic design. Built by experienced developers, it takes care of much of the hassle of web development so you can focus on writing your app without needing to reinvent the wheel. It's free and open source. That's free as in free beer. So it's fast, secure, and scalable. Um, it was designed to help developers take applications from concept to completion as quickly as possible. I know a few years ago, it was advertised as the, uh, as the tool that gave you the fastest path to making a web app. I don't see that anymore. So I don't know if someone uh, caused them to back down on that claim, but uh, that's, that's how they used to top themselves. Uh, Django takes security seriously and helps developers avoid many common security mistakes. Some of the busiest sites on the web leverage Django's ability to quickly and flexibly, flexibly scale. Who uses Django? Discus, Instagram, Knight Foundation, MacArthur Foundation, Mozilla, National Geographic, Open Knowledge Foundation, Pinterest, and OpenStack. These are all the key uh, companies listed on Django's own, own website. And Django, much like Python itself, you know, everyone says Python is batteries included. Uh, Django's take on that is fully loaded, and it very much is. It's extras you can use to handle common web development tasks. It takes care of user authentication, content administration, sitemaps, RSS feeds, and many more tasks right out of the box. The admin interface, okay. One of the most powerful parts of Django is the automatic admin interface. It reads metadata from your models to provide a quick model-centric interface where trusted users can manage content on your site. Its recommended use is limited to that of an organization's internal management tool. It is not intended for building your entire front end around. And I absolutely second that. Okay, so if we're gonna do anything with the Django admin interface, we've gotta have some models. Models are Django classes that represent tables in your database with a little extra metadata. You can create new models from scratch or create models to match tables that you already have. If you already have a database full of tables, you can use Django's inspect DB management tool, which will analyze your tables and it will propose models for you. And that with every new version of Django that, that gets better and better and better. Um, it's, I use it all the time. You're still probably gonna have to tweak some stuff yourself, but it will give you um, a great uh, starting point. Okay, and if we're gonna have models, we gotta have a database too. So Django defaults to a SQLite database, which is fun to play around with, but it's got some limitations. Um, I recommend using a more sophisticated, robust, secure, and faster database engine such as, I know I've talked about this more than once in these meetups, Postgres or PostgreSQL. Most people just say Postgres. It's awesome, it's been around forever. It too is free and open source and it does everything. It's, it's insane. Uh, it's, it's so powerful and so versatile. And uh, yeah, I, I use it for everything now. So highly, highly, highly recommend. It's got JSON fields and binary fields and um, those geo, whatever, geospatial fields. And it's uh, super, super powerful. So all my Django projects have a Postgres backend these days. All right, these are gonna be the sample models that we're working with today. Super creative, I know. Um, developers and companies. And uh, here, these are gonna be the sample fields that we use for our developers model, uh, which will have a corresponding developers table. So first name, last name, email, phone, street address, city, state, zip code. Pretty straightforward stuff. And for our company's model, name. So we're gonna keep it simple. Um, let's make some models. All right. So then I hop over into PyCharm, which is my IDE of choice. And the folks present in person asked me to change from dark mode to this appalling light mode. Um, 
for the for the sake of this projection screen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to look at this without blinding myself and uh, see if I can still get through tonight's presentation. Okay, so we're gonna make our developer model. Um, so we will have a class, and I'm I'm obviously I'm not gonna live code this whole thing. So we're gonna hop back to a lot of what I've already done to prepare for this and put it in place in a way that's a little easier to see. Let's see. Can the, uh oh. I know everybody in the room can see that, fine. Um, how about on Zoom? This is plenty big, right? Let me know if any of the, the Zoom books out there can weigh in hey, on whether that's too big. Can we go down some or what? Yeah, but it looks good. I mean, it could be a little smaller if that's better for you, but we can see it just fine. That'd be Okay, great. I will then reduce the size a little bit. Let's see. Okay, if that's still good, I'm gonna keep going with it until somebody complains. Yep, still good. All right, so there's our developer model. Um, most of this is, is pretty straightforward. We've got character fields. You're setting a max length. Uh, blank equals true. This is something that directly relates to the admin interface. It means if somebody is gonna edit a record in this model, it's okay if they don't put anything in for that particular field of that record. So blank true, uh, we're defaulting that on all of them. And the, well, the actual default is just, um, is just a, uh, not a white space character, but it's a, a nothing space character. Obviously with a, a character field, you wanna use that instead of a null, that's best practices. Got an email field for the email address. And I think everything else all the way down is character fields. The reason, we're using character fields all the way through this is because so much garbage gets stuck in fields like this. You know, with a phone number, sometimes people are using parentheses. Um, even with zip codes, you've got, you know, the dash and the zip plus four and, and all that. So the safest thing I figured if you're just, if you're having wild user input and we're not gonna get into all that filtering for user input, then we're just gonna use plain character fields for all of this. So <clears throat> the company model is gonna come next. And that's going to look way more basic. Hmm? Um, wait, say that again. Ooh, what was that? There's a parenthesis in the. If someone enters a parenthesis in the telephone number field, will it, will it not be allowed? on their end on the UI or is it just when it comes through? So Django will let you filter for that multiple ways. Um, in the, ad, I think some of those filters will translate to the admin interface, but I know if you're building a view for the public facing website, you're going to have like a regex mask or you can have like all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm not sure which of those go directly to the admin, but if you leave them as plain character fields, it'll take anything. So. Now, I noticed that the email address is using an email field. I can't remember what the restrictions are on that. We can try to enter some bad data and see if it kicks it out or not. But yeah, okay. So here are our initial models. And obviously the company one is super straightforward and it's patterned the same way as the developer ones. And I think from here we can jump directly into creating, oh, I should refresh this. Okay, that should be empty, all right. Um, we are going to turn these models into tables in the database. And how do we do that? That is done with something called Django migrations. So um, the translation layer between Django models and database tables is referred to as the ORM. Uh, some people call it the ORM layer, some people just call it the ORM. It's the object relational mapping layer. The ORM is platform agnostic, meaning you can use it with many different database platforms and your models stay the same. Um, I put a star there because some databases do have limitations and some databases have extra features, uh, but 95% of the functionality is going to be the same. So everything that you saw in the models that's already there is gonna work with whatever database backend you have. It should all be fully compatible. So, okay, the actual migrations. Migrations are sets of instructions to create, alter, and delete tables based on models and changes to models. Uh, that actually includes deleting a model. If you delete a model in the models.py um, file, 
and run a migration on it, it's going to delete the corresponding table. So be careful what you do with your models. That's um, has direct effect on the database. Uh, the SQL generated by the migration files and executed in the migration process is purely dependent on the type of database specified in your settings.py file. Migration files can be edited manually, but there's usually no reason to do so. Um, I will show the contents of a migration file just so you can see what's going on in there. Some apps like the built-in admin app have their own migration files internally. That is going to be relevant in just a second. Okay, let's make some tables. All right. So let's see, do any migrations exist? Yes, I'm going to delete it. Okay. Um, for, I don't know what order to do this in, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna jump in here and give you some background on the database that we're gonna be using. It is a, I don't know. It is a Postgres database. Like I said, use Postgres for everything. And you can, with PyCharm, you have this great database tool for interfacing with any databases you have, um, you're working with, with your projects. And you put in, you know, your your host and your username, password, all your credentials and stuff go in here. And those same credentials need to exist in your settings Py file as well. And they go right here. So those are all the same details that you saw for PyCharm's own interface with the database. And this just lets Django interface with that same database. Um, make sure you get all this stuff input correctly, including the engine that Django will be using to interface with the database, or none of these migrations are going to work. Um, this is what you start with in a new Django project. Like I said earlier, it uses a SQLite database and it just creates one on the fly <clears throat> when you get things started. And it has its own engine for interacting with that. This one is using Postgres engine because we're using a Postgres database. So you will have to put this in yourself after starting a Django project and configuring your, uh, your settings file. The other thing you're going to have to put in here for your model migrations to work is the name of the app that you're working with. So uh, for those of you who have never created a new Django project before, you just, you name the project and Django basically sets up all the the project files, the initial project files and the whole directory tree for you. And from within that, you can start an app of your choosing. And the app is what holds the admin.py file, the models.py, all that stuff. Um, it's down here. I know that is probably harder to, to see. I did not update the font on that or uh, upsize the font on that. <clears throat> but this is all crucial stuff that has to be added for these migrations to work. So make sure you get your app, whatever you've named it, at the end of the list of the installed apps. And you can probably leave everything else that's in here. Like I said earlier, there's so much functionality that Django just handles for you um, in terms of you know, security and session management, messaging, all that stuff. 99% uh, of the time, I leave all of this stuff exactly where it is. And I just build on top of it as I'm, as I'm going. So, okay. We are going to run a migration. You do this through Django's built-in um, management console. Uh, you can run this directly from the command line if you want to, but IDEs like PyCharm have a built-in interface for it, which is great. They give you autocomplete and all that stuff. So um, make migrations is what you want to do to create the migrations for these models that we just designed. <clears throat> and there is our migration file. So basically this is Django's own syntax for creating tables based on the models that you laid out. Um, and it's a lot of the same stuff. And this is what gets translated into SQL create statements or SQL alter statements or delete statements, all that good stuff. And to then run the migration, you give the Django management command migrate. <clears throat> we're, we're actually gonna see a lot more happen. Um, can you all read that down there at the bottom? I hope so. It basically just says it's creating a model company, creating a model developer, and yeah, and it shows that an initial .py file was, was generated. So here we go. Okay, you can see at the bottom, a lot more happened than just the creation of those two models that we made ourselves. There's a ton of stuff that went on here. <clears throat> There's an off table and an admin table, a whole bunch of off tables. Look through that list while I, I take a drink here. 
So all that stuff is related to the authentication and to the admin interface. And those were created through migration files that were just built in with the admin interface. So, and then at the very bottom, I think, let's see. Where are our tables? I don't know why I don't see them there. Let's check out the database and see what happened. See if they do exist. Tables. Okay, there's all the built-in Django stuff. Right there. And yep, okay. Our tables exist too. Yay. All right. Those are all the fields that we created for the developer table slash model. And those are, that's the one field. ID fields are built into every table by default with Django. Great. But there is no data yet. So we are going to cheat with um, a little module I added called Faker. It generates fake information for situations exactly like this. You can do names and email addresses and phone numbers and all that stuff. So I've got a script already prepared. And I'll show it to you because you might as well. There you go. Super, super easy to use. <clears throat> um, and what we're doing right here is just we're running through it a thousand times and it's creating objects in the developer model with fake first name, last name, email, phone, all that stuff. So. And populate developer model with fake info. Okay, that was pretty quick. So let's open that table again. Ta-da, now we magically have data to work with. This is awesome. And Faker will, um, there's so many uh, public, um, they're called providers that you can add to Faker for doing things like uh, motor motor vehicles and credit cards and all kinds of random data sets <clears throat> to play with. So we've got data to work with now. Now for companies, um, I think we should just use the list of companies that use Django. So we've got Discus and Instagram and Right Foundation, all these. One cool thing about the uh, the database tool that's built into PyCharm, you can just add stuff like this. It's super easy to copy and paste. It's full like rows of data and uh, it, it takes it. It's very good about knowing where stuff's supposed to go. And so there, we've got it. All right. We made some tables. Now we've got to register those with the admin. So Django uses a simple decorator to register a model with the admin interface. The decorator should be placed above the admin class that will define the attributes and behavior of the model view within the admin interface. Um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know, a decorator, that's part of Python, it adds new functionality to an existing Python object without really modifying the structure of the object. <clears throat> so, actually, Yeah, let's register some models. Okay. All right. And this is where we will jump into our admin.py file. This is another one of the built-in files that's it's built in there for you as soon as you start a new app in a Django project. And what the decorator is going to look like for an admin class is going to be this. That's all it is. So now we're, we're showing a little a red error line under developer, and that's because the developer model has not been added to this yet. So we need to import that developer model. Okay, and our nasty red went away. And then we'll create the class. So I think it's gonna be called developer admin. And it's, what is it, admin? Model admin should be it. And your colon at the end of class? No, yes, there is. Okay. And I'm just going to put a pass on there. And let's just start with that one and see. Let's see what it does. 
I'm turning on our uh, the development mode of the web server, which should just show us a Django rocket ship. Okay. And if we add a slash admin to that, okay. Ah, it wants us to log in. How does it know who we are? It does not. So this is another chance to use the Django management console. They've got a command for create super user. Yep, sure. Here's me, Michigan Python for the password. <clears throat> All right, now can we log in? Do not update. All right, and there it is. There's our developer's model that we just registered with the admin interface. We haven't really defined anything about it yet. It's so it should just be a basic representation of the model. Let's see what that looks like. That is totally useless. Um, that means nothing to me, um, but we can click on these. So let's click on one anyway. Okay, there you go. Um, this is a, uh, that's one of the developers that we added. Let me pop back and look at another one. And there it is. But again, this is pretty useless <clears throat> in this form. So uh, part of it is because we haven't really defined anything for the, the admin class, but also we haven't done any of the metadata with the model. I mentioned at the beginning, the great thing about Django is you can add metadata to your models. And um, <clears throat> it's, that's, the, that's what gives you all the power in dealing with the model class in Django. So the first thing we're going to add <clears throat> is a self descriptor. Actually, I think it's in my slides too. Okay. Self identifying a model with the dunder string method. And we'll also talk about ordering columns with the meta class, setting a model's verbose plural name with the meta class, and maybe some more stuff, but we're gonna, we'll start here. Hmm. My throat is super dry. Okay, so we're going to define, there it is, this is the self-identifier, and you can return whatever you want. Um, I think for this, we'll do an f string that returns self.firstName and self.lastName. Now let's hop back over here, hit refresh. There we go. That is way more useful. So now each object in the model is self-described by the pattern that we entered for this self-descriptor. We can do the same thing for company. It's going to be a lot easier because we're just doing the name. And we don't even need an F string. We'll just do self.name. But we haven't registered an admin class for company yet. So we're going to do the same kind of thing we did for developer. We put company in here and admin register company class. We'll call it company class. I mean, company admin. And then model admin. All right. Now when we go back out to this view, okay, we now have companies. That doesn't look right but there they are. And if there were extra details in here, um, we would be able to edit them right now. <clears throat> the only thing that's letting us edit is the name. So speaking of the name, let's, let's fix that right off the bat. Because a lot of changes that you'll see in the admin interface are actually controlled from the model um, <laughs> rather than what you're doing with the admin class itself. So if we go into a model, and add a meta class within the company class, there is an option for us to set verbose name plural. And we can set that to companies instead of company YS. Refresh, and there you go. Is this, can everyone see this too online? Excuse me. 
How does it look on your end? It's big enough? Okay. Yeah. All right. And I think, let's see. Let's change our ordering because as you might have noticed, these developers are totally out of order. Ordering is another setting that can be done from the meta subclass. It's very straightforward. You just give it a list and you name the fields that you want the sorting to go by. So we're gonna do last name, first name, hop back in here, hit refresh, and there you go. Your sorting is done. Now, um, and we do the same thing for for this, but it's such a short list, it's not gonna make that big a difference. There, and now that's an alphabetical order as well. Okay. All right, this is, it's about to get more fun. Actually, well, yeah, yeah, we'll start here. If we create a relationship between the developer model and the company model, the relationship can be viewed and edited within the model view of the admin interface. So as you saw earlier, when we were looking at developers, all of these fields, these are just, they're basically just text fields and you can change whatever you want. Like if I wanna change this person here from Montana to Michigan, again, these are all fake addresses. So, and I hit save. Now that person says Michigan. It's as easy as that, which is, I mean, just that alone, if you've got a bunch of users and you're dealing with a real database full of data and they need to make changes to something without messing with SQL, this right here already gets you over part of that hurdle in the situations I've been in. So that's super handy. <clears throat> okay. Um, we are gonna make the company model a parent of the developers, and then we're gonna randomly associate developers with these various companies. Now, we're gonna do that by adding a foreign key here for company. Oh, I can do this. Okay, foreign key, company. Uh-oh, it's already upset. And the reason is because and I don't know if this is just a pure Python thing, Dan probably knows, or if it's a Django thing. <clears throat> if you are referencing another class that you're connecting to as a foreign key, that class has to come above the class that's referencing it. Is that pure Python? Okay. So we're gonna move this up here. And now everybody's happy. And we'll say no is okay. Blank is fine. Default is also. And Django makes you define what happens on delete of a record with a foreign key relationship. We're going to say do nothing. All right. So what do we do once we have made a change to a model structure like this? Anybody? Someone from the room, tell me. Come on. Refresh. Migrate. Migrate, exactly. So we'll jump down here to our Django management console. We're gonna make migrations. All right, it just did it. A new one appeared and here's what it's doing. We'll try to blow this up. Okay, so alter model. Oh, it's also, it's changing our, uh, the ordering that we had. It's changing the verbose name. It's doing all that stuff. <clears throat> I don't know if those are changes, I don't know if all those changes are affecting the tables themselves, but uh, it's still including it in our migration. And then uh, here's where we're adding the uh, the foreign key. So that will get converted to Postgres style SQL and it will be executed when we run migrate. Okay. It looks like it happened. Let's hop into the developer table with our actual database tool. And there we go. We have a new field at the end, company ID, but there's nothing in it. So I wrote a little cheat script 
here, assign devs to companies. I'm just going to do it by ID. I think the real Django way to do this would be to take company names and feed it a list of names and randomly select from one of those names. <clears throat> but this is quick and dirty. And, um, and we'll just do that. Boom, assign devs to companies. Okay. Let's hop back to that developer table, hit refresh. Uh oh. Hmm. Oh, you know what? I probably, let's see. Company ID, ran in it, one through nine. I know why that's happening because my Py my Python console has not been reloaded since the models changed. So if you're in that situation, um, make sure you reload your Python console and then you can pull that stuff in again and it will actually be able to see the fields that it's trying to edit. Okay. Cool. I'm glad that happened because that is a common issue with this stuff. So um, if that happens to you, then you'll, you'll know why. So let's see what this did to our admin view. I'm going to hit refresh just in case. Now I'll open up one of these devs. And now we have this. We've got a brand new field at the bottom, and it's got a drop down representing all the possible companies that have that foreign key relationship to the company table. And you can actually just move this developer to a new company right now. Boom. Now Caroline works for Instagram. Save and it's done. So again, I think that's really powerful. Uh, you're, you're limiting your users to specific choices that actually with the relations in the database. And let's go even further by expanding what you see and how these developer uh, how these model views function. The first thing that I like to set is what's called list display. This determines which fields are going to be displayed in that overall list view that we've been using. So that's what much, much, much handier. And another super cool thing you can do in here. Oh, notice that the um, the full name view just disappeared. That is because we have given it something in list display to use. <clears throat> so it only uses it was only using that self descriptor of the model because nothing was there at all. So what if you wanted to edit something in this view? Let's just do first name. I mean, actually, what are people what are people going to be changing? Maybe their phone. Maybe their email. Save that. Refresh and look. Now you can actually change these fields directly within this view, which is awesome. The rest of the stuff, you actually have to enter the record and then make those changes. But sometimes you want to be able to do stuff on the fly just from <clears throat> that initial list view. And that's what list editable is for. What if we actually want to be able to search for something? You just define that right here. First name, last name. And all of a sudden, notice there isn't even a search box here right now. Hey, refresh, and there's a search box. So we can look for Johnson. And there's everybody that comes up with the name Johnson be it first or last, boom. And the searching in here is pretty fast. <clears throat> All right. Now, this is one of the super, super, super powerful features, I think. And I know I make reference to this in here somewhere. OK. <clears throat> Excuse me. List display, editability, searching, filtering, over filtering, restricting fields, and making read-only fields. All right. The list filter. This is super, super powerful. I'm just going to start off with state. Watch what this does. Boom. You get this filter window on the right-hand side. 
and it's got all the states that are part of your data set. And if you click on one, so I'll just click down here on Michigan. <clears throat> there's no way there's only one person from Michigan. Oh, because we still got the search for Johnson. Thank you. So we'll remove that. And there we go. So that's 27 developers and our fake data set <clears throat> that are listed as being in Michigan. Yeah, <clears throat> the zip codes are all messed up too. So that's what you get with Faker. It's, um, you'll have to use something else if you need more realistic data. Um, okay, searching, filtering, okay. The reason I have over filtering in here, you'll get into situations, I've, I've seen people do this, they'll add something like city. <clears throat> it'll do it but look that's just kind of useless um it's easier to just do a search for the city uh but this you know yeah why do you want your filter to be set up that way <laughs> so be careful about over filtering <clears throat> and um, restricting fields. So if you want to define specifically what fields can be viewed or used in the admin, that's what goes into this, the fields attribute, I guess it is. So if we don't want anyone to see their address at all, you make that change and then, well, it's still going to be visible in the list view, I think, because we've left it there. So let's get rid of that city filter. Okay. Yeah, so it's still in the list view, so you can see it there. But if you go to the actual record, all that stuff is now gone. So the what it's limited to what I what I placed. Alternatively, you can set fields to read only. So they'll still be displayed but they won't be editable. Right, yep. Like even me, and I'm logged in as a super user right now. So I'm just gonna remove that entirely. So there you go. So now these are no longer text boxes or <clears throat> text fields that, that are editable. You can still see it, you just can't make any changes to it. So I know we're running out of time. I wanted to jump into this real quick. <clears throat> permissions. It is super, super, super easy to change permissions for all the models. Um, no, that's weird. Oh, wait, here we go. <clears throat> so mm, this set of permissions applies to both groups and um, users. So if we were creating a group instead of editing a user directly, you would get the same um, assortment of permissions. And they, they do have model specific permissions, such as adding, changing, deleting, and viewing, which is awesome. Um, I use this a lot <clears throat> with my clients. And um, yeah, what else? It's easy to add people to groups. Let's see. Um, management. <laughs> Oops. There's the management group and you can say, sure, you guys can do anything you want with all the models we have. And you can make a new user. Yeah, sure. Oops. Make sure you give them staff status. Otherwise they won't be able to log in to this admin interface at all. And yeah, and then just put them in whatever group you want them to be in. And they can be in multiple groups. And this interface is all super, super easy to use. So if I were to log out and then log back in as Joe, I would be able to do all those things to all those models, except for the, um, <clears throat> these kind of admin only models for groups and users. So yeah, um, let's see what else. Yep, just did that. I need a Kleenex so badly. 
Um, cool. Oh, and if anybody wants us to copy this repo, it is on GitHub. It is public. Um, I think I just put the requirements file up there. So yeah. Any questions? Is there? Oh, thank you. Oh my God. Just step off camera. Yeah. Good looking out. Okay, yeah. Any questions? You've obviously used the, the Django admin interface. Just a little. Yeah, a little bit. <clears throat> Any questions online or on chat? I see. What about you guys? Nope. Y'all work with people who you need to give that kind of access to? Yeah. Using PHP and do and doing all the SQL calls. Then I saw Django just like no no required any SQL SQL. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. 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 It's great. Um, like, yeah. Sure. 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 I, I, there, there are projects, honestly, where I, I don't build any, I'm not building a web app at all. I just need to manage data a certain way. Like, I've got a lot of web scraping projects like this where I have no web app whatsoever, but I'm using the Django ORM just because so much stuff is faster with it. So, yeah, <clears throat> it's great for that. I'm trying to think. I still hadn't really messed with PyCharm's database tools, and that oh, was really cool. Oh, oh, they're great. Yeah. yeah. And they also they let you, um, it's got a visualization tool. Where is it? Hmm. Well, no. Are y'all seeing anything I'm not seeing? Materialized view? No. What? Okay. Well, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool. It'll I mean it, it shows you like all the tables and it actually draws the relationships out and yeah. That's great. Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. And it's probably going to look better with the. Uh... There you go. Yeah. No, it's cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, this was the last thing custom methods. I'll throw it in since no one's asking any questions. <clears throat> so you can totally add custom methods to your models. <clears throat> and then you can include that custom method as a field in the admin. So list display, what, what was it called, Google? Something. Mm -mm. Search with Google. So search with Google. Developer list view. Oh, there it is. Search with Google. And it gives you a little map at link. And you click it. And boom. It searches that address. It's not finding not anything because, because it's a totally made up address. But all I had to do to get that to happen was make this custom model method. I'm, I'm naming search with Google. 
I'm marking it safe because it's HTML and Django has so many protections in place for that. And it's just a Google search string. It's just an HTML search string. And we're throwing in the street address, replacing spaces with plus signs, city and state. And we're doing target blank. So it opens in a new tab. And uh, yeah, you can, you can click that on any of these. You can go bang, 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 bang. And it's looking all of them up in Google. And it's not finding any results because all those addresses were made with Faker. But um, yeah, it's super, <laughs> hey. Yeah. Got the state wrong though. <laughs> super, super, super powerful stuff um, can be integrated into that admin. And um, and again, you know, this is just called the, the intro because we're really scratching the surface. It can do tons and tons more. So. All right. Any other questions, anyone? Any questions online? <laughs>